recording. Today we're talking about the infamous eggplant. Not just any eggplant though, the kind from the nightshade family of vegetables. The one you eat, well, you know, the vegetable. <laughs> Here's another episode of What the F is This Eggplant Edition. But before we get into one of my favorite vegetables, if you're new here, welcome to Adventures of Carlian. We're all about pursuing our passions and improving just a little bit every day. So if you down, hit the, <laughs> hit the bell, hit the subscribe, and join the adventure. Eggplants or aubergines or other names that I cannot pronounce used to be white and used to be egg-shaped, hence the name eggplant. But over time, the insect-resistant, uh, drought-tolerant purple globe won out, which is why you won't find white varieties widely available. And peak season for eggplants is from July to October and, well, the purple eggplant originated and still grows wild in Asia, whereas the scarlet or orange eggplant comes from Africa. Eggplants made their way to Europe with the Islamic Empire in the 7th and 8th century. Fun fact! China is the largest producer of eggplants with over 63% of the world's production. Wow! The amazing thing about eggplants is there are many varieties. Even though they're all similar and mild in flavor, there are some subtle differences that will lend towards different applications. And some of them are just so darn cute. Mm. So the Asian eggplant varieties tend to be long and slender and difficult to tell apart. Their skin is usually thin, very few seeds, which means less bitterness. Under the Asian eggplant category, we have Chinese, Japanese, Taiwanese, and Filipino that tend to look very similar in shape and sometimes the color can be different. The other one that falls underneath the Asian category is Indian and they are more like a little baby. A little baby. He kind of looks like a baby. Next, we have the fairy tale varietal, and it's pretty cool because it has these striped white and purple. It also looks like graffiti, which is why it's also called graffiti or zebra, but the difference is basically just the shape. So you can find the fairy tales, which tend to be more long, kind of like the Asian ones, or you can get the zebra or graffiti, which are more globe shaped. Then we have the most common eggplant here in the U.S. is the globe or the American eggplant. The very big ones that you find at the market very easily. You know, they tend to have a meatier texture to them and their skin is a little thicker so it makes it great for charring. Next we have the Italian eggplant which is very similar looking to the American or the globe eggplant. It's just a little smaller and more tender than the American version. Different varieties or heirloom varieties that you'll find under the Italian flag of eggplants would be Rosa Bianca or the Black Beauties. Some non-purple varieties are of course the white eggplants which have a ton of varieties among them like the Casper, Cloud9, Ghostbuster, Albino, you know. Anyways they're basically the same as the purples but white in color. Then you have the Thai eggplant which can also come in white but often are found green. They're the super firm ones and they're really small kind of like this size. Because they have so many seeds they tend to be more bitter and they're used in stir fries and curries. Then there is the little green eggplant and it has a little bit more of a creamy flush when cooked. And then finally we have the orange or scarlet eggplants. Um, they're also called Turkish eggplant or Ethiopian eggplant. They look like persimmon but with green streaks. So I get why eggplants kind of get a bad rap. What? They're kind of a hassle to work with. You gotta peel them or they take too long to cook or you don't gotta peel them or they take too long to cook. They're flavor you can't just eat out like an apple like there's so much prep involved in an eggplant but honestly you can think about it in a different way you know think about how creamy they can be and how much flavor they can hold uh, they can really hold a very deep flavor especially if you grill it's a very good substitute for other meat dishes there's a lot of vegan and vegetarian dishes that use eggplant that are just as good or even better as their meaty 
cousin. They're delicious grilled, stir fried, and stews roasted, and some are definitely pretty good raw. Here are some tips for tastier eggplants. If you're using really fresh Asian varieties, then leave the skin on. But if you're using thicker skin or older eggplants, then you might want to peel it first. So the biggest thing you can do to your eggplants is to dry them out. So cut them up, sprinkle some salt, let them sit out, you know, let it draw out some of the moisture because eggplants are about 80 to 90% water. Another thing you can do is to brine them. Brining will get maximum flavor into the eggplants. So it's a really good technique to get more out of them. So because eggplants are like sponges, they're going to absorb a lot of the liquid you're putting in your pan. So if you're you if you have a lot of oil in your pan, you're going to have some oily eggplants, you know. If you're going to grill it, just brush some oil on there before you put it on the grill. So now you're probably asking which eggplant you need to use. So the narrower eggplants like the Chinese and the fairy tale tend to have less seeds and thinner skin, so they're really good with sauteing, with grilling, or eating raw. The thicker, larger ones like Globe, they're good meat substitutes, so they do really well roasted or baked. Then we have tiny Thai eggplants, which have a lot of seeds, and they tend to be used more for curries. I hope those tips really helped you learn about picking and cooking eggplants. So now to Adrian to talk about some of the nutritional information of eggplants. In ancient times, eggplants were believed to cause insanity and malaise. And this probably stemmed from their relation to other toxic items in the nightshade family and also because of their bitterness. But luckily this turned out to be false and newer eggplant varieties have been bred to be a little bit more sweet. While eggplants don't offer that much in nutrition, they do offer a decent supply of potassium and fiber. Eggplants have antioxidants like vitamins A and C, lutein, and anthocyanins. It's also high in polyphenols, which can help cells process sugar. As a nightshade vegetable, eggplants contain solanine, or solanine, which can affect inflammation. So those with sensitivities or arthritis may want to limit their consumption. Okay, with all of that fun stuff out of the way, we can head to the kitchen and try some of my favorite eggplant dishes. Start by grilling or roasting your eggplants. With a thin knife, prick your eggplants and then coat them with oil. Because we don't have an open flame source, we're just gonna go ahead and roast these in the oven. Use the highest heat possible. You want these guys to brown. In the meantime, chop one medium sized sweet onion and a roughly one pound of fresh tomatoes. That's about three or four depending on the size. If you can, use one with less water content like aroma or beef steak. Once your eggplants have browned, blackened, and then fully cooled, remove the skin and then mash all the eggplant together. If you're able to char them on an open flame, you'll get a much deeper flavor. Then add two tablespoons of fresh lemon juice to your eggplant. In a large pan, brown your onions, add a tablespoon of garlic paste and your tomatoes. Give that a good mix and then begin to season it. Start with one tablespoon of salt, half a teaspoon of paprika or any other chili powder, half a teaspoon of turmeric, and then two teaspoons of garam masala. Stir to combine and then cook until the tomatoes are completely soft. Feel free to adjust the spices and the spice levels to your liking. Then add the mashed eggplants, stir that in, and cook for another three to five minutes until everything really comes together. You can cook it longer to make it a little bit thicker, especially if you had watery tomatoes. Finish it off with some chopped cilantro and then serve it with your favorite naan, pita, rice, or even pasta. So I hope you've got you drooling over eggplants. If you're a fellow eggplant lover, give us a thumbs like and let us know what your favorite eggplant dish is in the comments. So don't forget to subscribe, hit the bell, join this community and catch us on the next What The F series video, which is a very Instagram worthy ingredient. So we'll see you on the next one. Bye. Bye.